Good afternoon. Wow, there's more people here this afternoon than there was this morning, so I feel kind of special. <laughs> yes, um, so my name is Nolan Hoshino. I'm a uh, co-founder of Because Media Social Communications here in Vancouver, Washington. Ra Ra. Oh, I'm Emily Logan. I'm an online campaign manager at Care2.com. And my name is Kim Hash, and I'm the director of development for Children's Center, which is a nonprofit mental health agency serving children, youth, and families here in Clark County. So we're here today to talk about um, how nonprofits use the social space to get their message out. And I was kind of digging some on the statistics. And um, as of right now, this year, um, there's over 1.6 million nonprofits in the United States. And on April 21st, um, if you're on Twitter, um, at nonprofits orgs, just followed their 50,000th um, nonprofit. So that's going to tell me in the next two to three years, that number is going to grow and the space is going to get crowded. So one question I ask a lot of nonprofits we work with is like, why are they in the space when it's going to start to get crowded? And I love what um, the previous speakers talked about curation. Um, there's going to be a time where we're going to have to now trust curators online uh, to filter some of that stuff. Uh, so kind of see that in the future. But um, so why, why are nonprofits online? And I wanted to kind of pose that to maybe you two if you can answer. <laughs> um, well, I think, uh, I mean, at least in the work that we do, um, nonprofits have a lot of different channels in which they need to reach out to people. Um, and uh, whether it's for fundraising, whether it's for asking people to sign a petition, whether it's for, you know, uh, doing any, any, any number of things that a nonprofit needs to do, um, it really provides a unique outlet for nonprofits to uh, find the people that they need uh, where they are. And I would agree with that. And uh, for me, with my nonprofit, it's a wonderful venue to advertise events that are coming up or a need for volunteers or we're doing a toy drive and get the word spread around that way. Um, and uh, also, I just have to say the reason that we're here today, we are the nonprofit partner for this conference. And um, so we've been promoted in the advertising and everyone was encouraged to bring a donation of cash, a stuffed animal or aquarium rock. There's a story behind that. Uh, today, and so I was asked, well, how did Children's Center get that honor? And it was through social media, believe it or not. And in this case, it was a Facebook connection. And uh, back in 2008, I was working for a different organization, and we organized the Marshall Public Leadership Award Program. And that year, uh, Cheryl Bledsoe, who uh, is the wonderful force behind this conference, was our recipient. So Cheryl and I worked together very closely for a year, developed a very good relationship. Of course, when I finally got onto Facebook, we became friends. And I changed jobs last October. And I can tell you from past experience, many times when people before social media would change jobs, you would lose touch with people you had known through different realms. Well, thanks to Facebook, Cheryl and I maintained a friendship. And several months ago, um, she put up a little status, something of kind of asking, what is the value of the poke feature? And there was some commentary about how silly it is. So of course I had to send her a little poke her way and she sent one back. For months we did this. Well, when this conference uh, came to Cheryl, it was suggested in one of their early planning meetings that they partner with a nonprofit. And immediately she thought of me and Children's Center sent me a message on Facebook to see if we could meet, and we made this great partnership. So thanks to Cheryl for reaching out, and thanks to all of you who uh, donated as you came in today, greatly appreciated. Um, great, so uh, I think we're each gonna sort of, we're gonna get a little bit higher in scale here. I'm gonna talk really quickly about a campaign um, that's quite different uh, than a local campaign, and it's something that I had nothing to do with. Um, but I, I think it's a really great story. Um, and some of you may know it, it's the Dear John campaign that happened on Twitter um, a few months ago. Um, politics aside, it's, uh, it relates to um, HR 3, the uh, No Taxpayer Funding for Abortion Act that uh, was a big um, hubbub uh, in the House. Um, and when it, first, uh, when it first sort of came into uh, 
people's, uh, people's heads. It was the forcible rape language um, that they put in there. And as you can imagine, uh, feminist groups and women's health groups and women's group groups all over the country were up in arms um, about this. And um, it was actually a feminist blogger, um, Sadie Doyle from tigerbeatdown.com. Um, she started this campaign called uh, Dear John. And um, it was just has hashtag Dear John, and of course it referenced John Boehner. Um, and there were just so many really cool things about this campaign. Um, one of the main ones was that it wasn't started by any one nonprofit. Um, it was started by a feminist blogger, and all of the nonprofits who were working on this issue kind of could adopt it and could um, use it to, to get the word out. So it was very comprehensive. Um, uh, it was also, you know, obviously, Dear John is something people have a reference to, right? They know what that means, a Dear John letter, and it kind of just relates. So it's something that people could latch on to immediately when they saw that hashtag. Um, and uh, it was also not limited, since it was created by the blogger. You know, the nonprofits weren't fighting over it. They weren't fighting over whose campaign that was. And you know, when, when a nonprofit creates a campaign, often it's, this is the hashtag for the campaign that's relating to the Sierra Club or you know, whatever organization. And this was created by a blogger, so it just went hog wild. Um, and people also could use it for whatever they want, whether it be, um, I just want to tell Twitter what I think about this bill, and then hashtag Dear John. And so you know, that, that could be one use of it. Or they could say, I want to link to my favorite women's organization and do hashtag Dear John because they're working on this issue. So it was really broad use of how, um, uh, you know, how the community could use this kind of hashtag. Um, and then the, you know, the kicker, the really awesome thing about it was that it was successful. And of course, um, you know, there are a lot of other things that could be att attributed to the success of that. But, um, but I think uh, you know, a lot of people that you talk to would say that um, these organizations and the people who uh, reached out via Twitter and Facebook with the Dear John campaign had a big part in getting that language taken out of the bill. So just kind of an interesting story about how uh, nonprofits are using um, Twitter in particular, and uh, I'll let Nolan take it. So my story is, uh, it's not even with my organization, but it happened just recently. Um, I have an organization I followed for a while, uh, and they're called Epic Change, and they did a great campaign uh, during Mother's Day called To Mama With Love, and I'm gonna like read their organizational statement because um, really, they're, they're a great organization, do amazing stuff online that it kind of blows me away, and there's just two of them. Um, so it's the, the organization is called epicchange.org, and they believe in people's stories are assets that can be used to, as resources to improve their lives. Uh, epic change helps people in need share their epic true stories in innovative, creative, and profitable ways. And w w what I liked about it was that um, the way they fundraise and the way they, they connect the uh, end user uh, to the donors is that they use great tools by um, using Facebook, by using Twitter. Um, they uh, started out by tapping into their uh, inner circle, uh, reaching out to their influencers so those influencers can reach to their influencers and so forth. Um, and what they did was they, um, the founders, um, Stacy Monk and Sanjay um, Patel, they uh, went to Tanzania, they met a woman by the name of uh, Mama Lucy who wanted to start a school um, because she believed that you know, education is the key to transforming the country's um, problem with poverty. So um, they were so moved by that that you know they wanted to share her story, and so they came back and started this campaign with Epic Change, uh, and so they also do another one. Uh, so so the Tomorrow Night Love just happened, and they raised uh, let's see here, within a few days, like I mean I think it happened like five days. They raised thirty thousand uh, dollars, and in November do another campaign called Tweets Giving or um, Epic Banks. Uh, last year they raised thirteen thousand. Um, so, so what I just did for the people who are on Twitter is basically I'm like retweeting. Really, I'm telling their story. I see something online and I retweet it because it's about sharing other people's story. Um, so, and like, like any of the story, the story lives on when you retell it. So with a tweet, if you retweet something, the story continue, continues to grow. So that's kind of like the message we want to say, that when you find something online, anything, 
you know, feel free to retweet it because um, if, especially if something interesting, one, it makes you a thought leader. People will say, oh, this guy is a cool guy that will send out some great tweets about such a thing, you know, cars or pit rocks or whatever. Um, but um, it's like another way of like spreading the message and everyone's got that power to do that here today. You know, just get on Twitter and just start doing, searching on hashtags. Even today, you know, if you find great speakers, you want to give us some props, you know, send out a tweet or send a retweet. So, so do you have any questions before, uh, we got four minutes. I can't believe we went this far, so fast. <laughs> any questions? How do you get more followers? Oh no, you're not one of those guys. <laughs> Here it is. Uh, secret, be awesome. That's it. Just be awesome. Um, no one, that, like, like any conversation, maybe you're at, a, you're at a cocktail party, right? If you're boring, I'm gonna walk away. I don't wanna be your friend. So it's just be awesome. Just put out great stuff. <laughs> I don't know if I have a better answer to that question. Um, the question was, how do you get more followers on Twitter? Um, uh, I mean, I, I think it's a matter of framing um, your campaigns as well. I mean, Twitter, obviously the 140 character thing is a huge limit. Um, and, you know, Facebook has a little bit more leeway. But you want to be, um, one great thing that we do um, as far as social media is we use Hootsuite. And we have um, a, a login that everyone in our organization can use. So basically, we're updating the page constantly, all day long, with different people from our staff. And so it gives it sort of a uniqueness and... Uh, you know, it's it's timely and you're doing things all day long. So instead of one person being totally overloaded with all of this responsibility of updating the Twitter page constantly and Facebook, uh, you know, uh, it, it allows everyone in the organization to contribute maybe once or twice a day and still keeps the content flowing. So I think it's framing your issues in a way that's, um, you know, that, 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 that keeps it interesting. And, you know, obviously there's much more to be said about that, but also spreading out the responsibility and making sure that you have valid, good content all the time. So um, one of the things we want to talk about too is like the future of uh, social media, what we, what we thought might happen two years from now, five years from now, and what are your thoughts? Sure. <laughs> um, well, I think it's, it's, it's absolutely something that will just continue to grow, and there's a number of reasons for that. You know, like I'm kind of new getting my organization into Facebook, so it's just, it's in its infancy. So I'm going to be working and working on getting more followers, putting it, spreading the word in my newsletters, et cetera, et cetera. But the, the real beauty for nonprofits is that social media is free. And so we're always looking to save money, but also to build awareness. And I have found already that Facebook has just been tremendous for that. Um, you know, friends telling other friends and, and encouraging them to attend our events or, you know, join in the toy drive. It's just really wonderful to see the community support nonprofits that they believe in that way and also learn about them. Um, our nonprofit has kind of been kind of quietly there for over 20 years in the community and uh, social media has helped bring it to the limelight. So I actually want to answer that question about the follower thing. I, I've got a visual here. So here I have a little pebble and it says tweet. If I threw this pebble in a pond, it would ripple across the pond. But if I had another tweet that was bigger, that had content, that was cool, that was awesome, and if I threw that in the pond, it would create a larger ripple. So that's how you get more followers. I guess I'll say one more thing about um, about the future, uh, which is um, someone in my organization said something really interesting, which was that he, I mean, I guess it's kind of a given, but he said that he thinks um, Facebook pages are going to be pretty much mandatory uh, for nonprofits, just like a website is, um, which I think it's, I think we're getting there. Um, at least a lot of the big nonprofits really, they have a Facebook page and they have to because that's where everyone is. Um, and, you know, unless you're a really devoted fan of a nonprofit, you're not necessarily going to go to their website all the time to see what campaigns they have running and stuff. And if you're on Facebook anyway and you see, oh, you know, this organization has a campaign with this or this relates to my, you know, my community, um, I think that's a, uh, just absolutely critical for nonprofits really meeting people where they are, so. So in closing, I just wanted to say that everyone has a story to share. 
uh, and we'd like to hear yours. Um, just a little plug. We're doing a little thing called Do Smoke Good. Uh, it's a hashtag. We want to know what you're doing good for the community uh, so we can retweet it and spread our, your message along with our friends and family. Thank you very much.